Sup guys, it's Yui. More weapon category reviews. Today going over the Great Spears. Not to be confused with regular spears, I've already covered those in a separate video. So the Great Spears are these ones here. That is larger versions of the regular spear. Still retain the same piercing attacks. Just a bunch of pokes that they always get. Uh, as for the Great Spears themselves, there are six in total. One can only be infused with the Ash of War. So this video is going to be slightly different to how I normally do it. Because normally I have the chart and I compare all of the damage values together. And mainly compare all the different ones that can be infused and tell you which is the Ashes of War to use. But being that there's only one, there's no need for a chart. Because there's nothing to compare it to. So when I cover the lands itself, I'll probably just go into more depth as to how much damage that it does do with every single infusion. And tell you which Ashes of War to use. And once I cover the other weapons, I'll just probably go into more detail. Um, this detailing their weapon AR. And it's their damage values themselves, so I'll just probably go into more detail when I cover those weapons. Um, as for our stats, I'm just going to have 40 and everything once again. Do not emulate this, it's purely for damage testing. As for the moveset, we're just going to be covering the Lance as the base model for the Great Spear moveset. They all have slight differences in their moveset, but once again, when I get to that specific weapon, I'll cover it. But getting right into the moveset, this gets a 3-hit combo, 1-handed and 2-handed. Very slow moving, but obviously these weapons do get a lot of range. And just going to be utilizing a bunch of different poking attacks, so... Piercing attacks with the counter damage is really good in this game. Uh, running light attack, pretty decent. The running heavy attack, though, is extremely good. So really good for doing total overall damage and knockback damage as well. You definitely want to utilize those when using, when using great spears. Crouching and rolling attack is just a horizontal swipe. Nothing too crazy there. At least you get a horizontal swipe while using these weapons. The jumping light attack, nothing too crazy. And jumping heavy attack, pretty basic as well. Backstab attack, more pokes. Just, this great spear is going to have a lot of pokes, you're going to realize. Same thing as regular spears. As for the heavy attack that the Great Lance gets, it's going to be more pokes. Some of the, most of the other weapons do get the horizontal swipes, but I'll get into that. But yeah, with the Great Lance and one other weapon, they just get pokes. As for the power stancing moveset, it's just going to get, you guessed it, even more pokes. But not too bad. Um, when you're the crouching and rolling attack, it's going to be a nice little upward cut, pretty quick, not too bad. As for the running attack, though, is extremely good. It's going to be very comparable to the running heavy attack one-handed. So the power stancing, dual wielding, running attack is going to be really good for doing those multiple damages. Stagger damage as well, and knockback damage. And then the jumping, power stance attack, once again pretty good, just doing double damage pretty much. Almost. As for the main weapon art, it just gets charged forth. It's pretty decent. Obviously hold on to it to make it go last a little bit longer. But you already have something similar to this in its uh, running heavy attack. So you're probably better off using something else so you can just have more variety. But yeah, we'll get into the certain Ashes of War once I do cover this weapon. And yeah, without the way, let's get right into the Great Land. Okay, so looking at the lens itself. Looking at the length of it, it's going to be extremely long. Obviously, I'll compare them once I do go through the rest of them. But it's going to be very, very long, which is nice. As for all of the stats, it's going to get a weight of 9. Pure physical damage, split scaling, and strength and dexterity both getting a C. A strength requirement of 20 and a 14 dex requirement, so it's not too bad. Total AR of 522 at 40-40. Which is okay, there's nothing really to compare it to, so we just gotta take it for what it is. We just went over the movesets, so nothing really to cover there. As to where to get it, you can get it pretty early on at Limgrave. All the way over here on top of one of these square structures, you can just pick it up from there. Going over all of the scalings though. So I'll probably just go walk through some, some of the Ashes of War real quick actually. So Ashes of War I'd recommend for a heavy infusion would be... Probably either Endure or the Hora lose Earthshaker. So if you want to just do a bunch of damage at once, just get something different adding onto your plate. Maybe Earthshaker as well, because they're both pretty solid. I like either one. This one did just get buffed to where it is a little bit quicker. So yeah, either one of those is nice. If you want to have something for different heavy attacks and using one of the roll is pretty nice as well. As for any of the keen ones, Bloodhound Step is just an obvious go-to as well. If you just want to have something for a range attack, I recommend Beast Roar if you haven't if you don't not using spells or anything like that. Our spinning slash is pretty decent because you don't really get many swiping attacks with your lands, so having this is a nice option. As for the quality based ones, Giant Hunt just does an absolute enormous amount of damage. Our Storm Assault can do a big chunk of damage as well, but I prefer a Giant Hunt just for the raw damage that it gets and like the fact you can just launch enemies up in the air is pretty cool. Uh, for a Magic, I definitely prefer Waves of Darkness, does a nice amount of damage as well, and it gives it a slight different moveset to what their regular. Uh, great spears get. As for fire, either one is perfectly fine. Flaming Strike's probably a 
slight better option being that your weapons can already do stagger damage. There's no real need to use Flame on the Red Mains unless, like, unless you like to just spam it. Uh, Blame, Black Flame Tornado is a really solid option as well. Just does a nice amount of damage being that you have a larger weapon you can keep spinning it around. Makes for a solid choice with that. As for Lightning, I'd probably rather have Lightning Ram. Oh, Thunderbolt's pretty good too. You can just keep spamming it because you can already do posture and stagger damage with your regular weapon. As for the sacred stuff, I'd probably go with Golden Land. There are not many times you can go with Golden Land, only really usable on larger weapons, so you definitely rather have something like that. Just a nice AoE explosion, follow up with a bunch of projectile attacks. Just really complements something like the Great Spirit nicely. And Sabaku is probably your best option here as well, unless you don't really care to have much bleed, but the Sabaku is absolutely amazing. And Ice Spear is an obvious option for Cold, I'd rather have this over anything else here. This Ice Spear is really good, the amount of stagger damage you can get with it. The posture break damage is insane. Same thing as Spectral Lance as well. So if you're going for an occult build, definitely rock this. But yeah, as for all of these scalings though. So Heavy will get you an A in Strength. Keen will get you a B in Dexterity. Quality gets you a B in both. Magic will get you a B in Intelligence. Fire will get you a C in Strength. Flame Art will get you a B in Faith, as would Sacred. Lightning gets you a C in Dexterity. Poison and Blood will get you a C in both uh, Strength and Dexterity and a D in Arcane. Cold will get you a C in both Strength and Dexterity and a B in Intelligence, and a Cold will get you a B in Arcane. Now normally I tell you which one this is best paired with in compared to the rest, but being this is the only one that can be infused, you really just pick your own build at this point, so it's not really the best pairing, it's more of just like, pick your best build. Um, if you wanted to, being that that has an A scaling in Strength, you probably want to use this with a Strength build, although it doesn't really retain a Dexterity scaling at all, but that's not that bad. But yeah. That's the Lance. Okay, next up we have the Tree Spear. Looking at the length compared to the Lance, it is going to be a little bit longer, which is really nice. As for all of the stats, it's going to have a weight of 9.5. It's going to be doing split holy damage, but it's going to be doing more physical damage though. A scaling of D in Strength, C in Dexterity, and a D in Faith. Lower-ish requirements, and a total AR of 730, which is extremely good. As for the move set, it's going to get a slight different heavy attacks. Mainly when it's fully charged, so... When it's fully charged, you'll do a nice little double poke, which is really good, and the follow-up will do a slash and a poke, so it's really, really nice, but everything else in the moveset will pretty, pretty much be exactly the same as the Lance. But yeah, that double poke that you get fully charged is really good, because you're still doing more total overall damage and more posture damage as well. And the fact that you get a, um, a different swipe with its follow-up attack is really nice, this adds to the moveset. One cool thing about this weapon, I mean, actually, I'll go over the weapon art first. So it gets Sacred Order, which pretty much adds about like 10 to 15% more holy damage to your weapon. So looking at the AR now, it's going to be doing a little bit more. I wish this was something slightly different though, because you can buff the weapon either way. So like I can buff the weapon. If I had like a faith build, I can use something like Electrify Armament. You're probably better off using the, um, the holy buff, so you're not really doing a bunch of different split damage. You want to go through just two defenses instead of three. But you'll see it's doing a lot more damage now. So I wish that the weapon art was something a bit different other than just a buff. Because obviously you can't have both buffs at the same time. So yeah, if it just had like some cool attack, it would be a lot better of a weapon. It's still like a positive, the fact that it does have a buff. But using a weapon, a spell buff is just always going to benefit more. Especially if you already specced into Faith, where you can use a buff either way. That's my only grapple weapon. But the total overall damage is actually insane. So if I like use something like Golden Bell, I'll probably be doing over a thousand damage. But as to where to find this weapon, you can get it pretty early on. Just before the Leonia of the Lakes, is going to be a caravan by this cliff. You can just pick it up on top of that. Okay, next up we have the Serpent Hunter. Looking at the length compared to the lance, it's going to be on the shorter end, which is unfortunate. As for the stats, it's going to get a weight of 12, doing pure physical damage, a A scaling in strength, and an E dexterity scaling, and it's going to have no requirements at all, and a total AR of 538. Which isn't too crazy. So the total overall damage isn't going to be really that good at all. And you can't buff it, so... Um, as for the moveset, it is going to get a slight different heavy attack. It's going to get just horizontal swipes, which a couple of other... I think the rest of the weapons do share this exact same moveset. It also does get a poke for its crouching attack, which is the only great speed that gets this for some reason, which is extremely good. So it's comparable to something like the Colossal Swords, where they get this really nice crouching poking attack, so really really good there because it's really really quick and it gets a slight different jumping heavy attack which is just going to be a slamming attack which in my opinion is better than the regular great spear jumping attack because attacking with the weapon as its spear um, as like the sword variant will just make it have a lot more range as well 
So I definitely prefer the moveset over the just the regular great speed moveset for those two attacks. As for the weapon art though, it's going to get Great Serpent Hunt, which is extremely slow, but really high damaging and nice posture damage as well. It does consume 10 FP for its initial cast, and then the follow-up will consume 20 FP, which is way too high in my opinion. You do get a real nice high amount of hyper armor during the cast animation. A couple people like don't really know what hyper armor is, I, I see it in the comments, but it's pretty much the being able to tank an attack with its like, poise. So it pretty much like, adds a lot of poise so you can tank the attack and have like a slight boost to your defenses as well. So being able to tank the attack during the animation is pretty much what hyper armor is. And it does get that throughout its entire animation, which is nice, but it is a way too slow in my opinion. But it is like a weapon that you get to use it against the boss, which is going to be laid right into the location of this weapon. Going to be pretty mid to late game, just before and when you enter the Rykard boss fight at the Volcano Manor. You just pick up the weapon from there, so you use that weapon against him itself, which is why it has that zero strength requirement, or that zero requirement in general. This, the fact that it has that lower and that no requirements at all, it's better for like soul level one runs if you're going to do something like that in the spec into strength because it has had that A strength scaling. But yeah, that's the Serpent Hunter though. Okay, here we have the Silurius tree. Looking at the length compared to the lance, it's going to be a little bit longer, which is nice. Well, compared to the tree spear, I think it's very similar. Yeah, it's very similar in length. Uh, looking at the stats, it's going to get a weight of 10, which is the heaviest so far. Doing split holy damage, but it's going to be even split between physical and holy. As for the scalings, it's going to get a B in strength, D in dexterity, and a C in faith, with high-ish requirements in strength. In total, overall AR of 717, which is less than a tree spear, and the tree spear can be buffed, where this one cannot. As for the moveset, the heavy attack is just going to be this horizontal swipe, so it's going to share the same thing as the Serpent Hunter but everything else is pretty much the exact same as the regular Lance. As for the weapon art though, you get this Siluria's Woe, which is a pretty nice attack, does like decent damage, obviously you're scaling with your weapon AR itself because it will hit with the weapon, but it does like a chunk of holy damage also, consuming 25 FP, so it's extremely high for honestly what it does. When it's fully charged, you do get a lot of range with it as well. It's like works as a projectile attack. Honestly wish that's the main weapon art would just did this. Like, there was no reason as to why you couldn't make it, like, that quick and have, like, a long projectile attack, because the initial... this the initial just using it by itself without charging it just cost way too much FP. There's no need to, to cost 25 FP to do some small little attack, whereas, like, the fully charged variant has, like, a pretty much projectile attack which goes very, very far, like, more than most spells do. Yeah, there's no reason as to why you couldn't do that initially, or just have a two-part weapon art. I don't, I don't know. I'm just not really a big fan of the fact you have to fully charge it to do that attack. And if not, you're really wasting 25 FP. But it still does decent damage overall. It's a great spear, so it will do posture damage also. So it's okay. That's up my one little gripe with the weapon. As to where to find it, though, is going to be pretty late on underground off the Crucible Knight Siluria. It's going to be around about here. You can just go fight the Crucible Knight, kill it, and get this weapon. Okay, next up is Vike's War Spear. Comparing the length back to the regular Lance, it's going to be a little bit shorter, but not too much shorter. As for the stats, it's going to have a weight of 8 and going to doing split fire damage by doing more physical. A B in Dexterity, C in Faith. It does have that passive effect of Madness build off, so this is definitely going to be a weapon more fine tuned for PvP. Low ish requirements and total AR of 689, so total area isn't that good either. You can't buff it, so it's definitely going to be a PvP weapon. This weapon, this, like, all my category videos are mainly meant for PvE, but I was going to cover it anyway. Um, the moveset it gets is going to be identical to the Siluria's Woe, so we just covered it with its horizontal swipes. As for the weapon art, it gets flame, Frenzy Flame Thrust. So, this attack is going to be doing pretty much nothing in PvE. It just does a lot of madness put up in PvP, which is what you want, because madness is pretty good. Even though it did this get nerfed, it's still pretty decent. It does have that damage over time. I wouldn't recommend using this in PvE at all. This is purely a PvP weapon, so I'm not going to really talk too much about it. As to where to find it though, you can get it pretty early on. You have to do part of um, Varia's questline, and then you'll go, go towards the Church of Inhibition, I believe, and you'll be invaded by Vike himself, then you can kill him and get the weapon. Okay, last of the weapons, we have Mogwin's Sacred Spear. Looking at the length compared to the Lance, it is going to be a lot longer. I think it's the longest spear in the game. Yeah, definitely the longest spear in the game. 
As for all of the stats, he's going to get a weight of 10, doing split fire damage, but doing more physical. Gets a C in strength, a C in arcane, and a D in dexterity. He is going to be doing that passive blood loss build up. Going to have a, an attribute requirement of 27 arcane, which isn't too bad. You want to spec into it anyway to take advantage of more damage and more blood loss build up. Doing a total AR of 691, which isn't too bad, being that you're, it's a blood weapon, so it's automatically going to be good for damage anyway. As for the moveset, it's going to be very it's gonna be the same as the lance so it's gonna have the pokes for its heavy attack which is pretty decent i probably prefer this having the horizontal types to have more differences in the moveset itself because the great spears don't really get any horizontal types so i just want something for variety but it's still not bad otherwise as for the weapon art you get blood boon ritual so you do this and it will just do a lot of there's like pretty much like an aoe attack where do a lot of blood flame damage to an enemy and for the next 20 seconds your weapon will be buffed with a blood flame as well, so we're doing even more blood loss build up and doing about 10% more fire damage, roughly. I think it scales with your arcane, actually. But you can use the weapon art and use the multiple inputs. So clicking it a second and a third time will just make it do even more damage and more blood loss build up as well. But it consumes 20 FP on every single one of those hits, which is very costly for how um, long that it does take to cast, alongside the fact that you get no poise or high armor during its animation. It's not really that viable to use in the heat of a battle but if you do get it off and you do st stagger them stun them and get that blood loss build up it does so much damage really really nice amount of damage one thing i wish that it did do is that cut on each one of those successive casts it actually reapplied the buff but i'm pretty sure the initial cast is what applies the buff and every um input afterwards doesn't i think that's what i've noticed because i could be wrong i'm probably wrong on that i know that buff didn't really last that long after i used the third the third part of the blood wound ritual but as to where to find this weapon you have to get a pretty late game so you have to kill mogwin himself and then you'll trade in the remembrance via anya and then get the weapon okay being that there's no chart i'm just gonna get right into my favorite build once again power stancing because i like to do it but using the lance gonna have this on sacred infused and in my offhand i'm gonna have the tree spear Going over my stats really quick, going to have 40 Vigor, 25 Mind and Endurance, 20 Strength so I can build the Lance, 40 Dexterity because this is what the Tree Spirit can scale off and it helps boost my Incantation speed also, and 60 Faith so I can use my Incantations. As a reason, I'm using the Lance so I can Power Stance because I don't want to have to use Silurius Tree because this one's better for Strength and I'm already specced into Dexterity to use the Tree Spear. So if you want to have a... Paladin build and Celerius Tree Spray a little bit better, but this one's better for Dexterity, so just the way it works out. And I'd rather have the Tree Spear, because it just does more damage, and I'm just going to have it in my offhand anyway, because I want to use this Ash Wall right here, Spinning Slash. It's not that great, but on a Lance, where you don't really get many horizontal swipes, and I like to have horizontal swipes to have variety so I can hit multiple enemies at once, it's definitely really good, and combined with the, the length that the lens actually gets it makes for a really solid ash and you can just keep spamming the first one over and over again and does nice stagger and posture damage as we will see um having the trace beam my offense perfectly fine because i can just switch to it to use my buff and actually buff my weapon and still benefit of it as for my seals i'm going to have the god slay seal because it is going to be doing the most damage at 60 faith i'm going to have one in my right hand as well because if i use my buff i don't want to switch and lose my buff so i want to have something else in my right hand the reason I have the giant seals is because I have a bunch of giant incantations that it can benefit off. So that's that. As for my talismans, I'm going to have Shard of Alexander because I'll be using the spinning slash a lot. These two talismans because I'm using incantations. And then Spear Talisman, which is probably the best to use for thrusting weapons in general because you just get a bunch of counter, uh, counter attack damage, which is really solid. As for my incantations themselves, I'm just going to have these ones. You use whatever ones you like. I just like these ones. I went over these in like my incantation video so and i'm very high in all of those if you want to ch uh, check out that video feel free by golden bells obvious option and that's any healing spells perfectly fine also but yeah as i would lead off i'll just have my sacred order buff my weapon then i'll use something like golden bell and if i wanted to i could just later for the spell something like giant's flame take thee and steven is not going to enjoy himself one thing you want to always use with the uh, power stancing great spears is the crouching attack because it's extremely quick and i'm getting my fucking shit kicked in but as you can see it's really really quick a lot quicker does decent damage does stagger damage also so all that combined just makes for a really nice combination 
as you can see, just really, really good. And you can just combo it as well. Going into Spinning Slash, and you can combo that directly into an attack. And as you can see, the Spinning Slash does a real nice amount of stagger damage also. So that just makes for all... There's not many weaknesses with this build because you have variations of quick attacks, horizontal swipes, really nice damage with poking attacks, and a bunch of variety with your spells. I just wish that the um, jumping attacks were a little, had a little bit more range, but the crouching attacks make up for anything that this power stance moveset was lacking in. And, and yeah, GG for him. Unlucky for the Stevens. But yeah, this is probably my favorite build to run with the Great Spears. There's not much variety being that there's only one weapon that can be infused. If they're hopefully like DLC will add more weapons that can be infused with the Great Spear. Well, yeah, have a Great Spear that can be infused. But at the moment, there's not much variety. And being that like half the weapons have a faith scaling, there's not much variety there either. I wish like there was something with the magic scaling. So I could actually utilize something like Ice Spear because I love that. But yeah, that covers my favorite build. Let's go right into the rankings. Alrighty, ranking time. Number one, Mogwin Sacred Spear. It's a blade weapon. It's going to be first. Just the way this game works, because Blade is insane, so I, I can't really put it anything lower than number one. But yeah, if I was going to talk about the weapon, it does a decent amount of damage. The Blade obviously is a positive, does that split fire damage. The weapon art does an enormous amount of damage, although it is pretty hard to pull off. But if you do pull it off, it is really, really solid. The fact that it does buff your weapon with a little bit of blood flame is pretty decent as well. Um, but yeah, the fact that it's like a Blade weapon that hits hard, that gets a decent up or not, it's just going to be number one. Number two, we have the Tree Spear. If this one had a unique Ash of War, I probably would have put this at number one, because it does a, a lot of damage, and it can be buffed. But the Ash of War is, like, Sacred Order, which buffs you up in any way, and I wish it just had something unique, because it does have the best moveset as well. One of the longest spears in the game, Mogwin's being the longest, so this one's the single, second longest. It does have that unique Heavy Attack, which I really like, but the fact that it doesn't have a unique Asher Wall is so upsetting. Yeah, this is like the one thing keeping me from wanting to use this weapon a lot. And putting this at number one is definitely that. Number three, we have the regular Lance. Only reason that this one's this high is because it's the only weapon that can be infused. So the versatility alone pretty much makes it better than everything else below this. But yeah, as a weapon itself, it's just pretty basic. Pretty basic weapon um, moveset. You can change the weapon also. It can become good. Better than the rest of the weapons here because... Once again, unique weapon art. But yeah. Number four, we have Silurius Tree. I like the weapon art on this one. The right like the range attack that it gets is really, really good. Although I just don't like the way they set it up. Like you have to hold on to it to get to that part. And like the initial non-holding variant of the weapon art just consumes way too much FP because they both consume the same amount. If the one a couple things I'll probably change about this is either one, they change the FP consumption to consume like 15 or 20 FP. Or just like slightly change how it works and make make it like a two part um, animation, so you can like have like the startup animation, and then if you click like light attack, you do like a slam attack. If you click heavy attack, you do a projectile attack. I feel like if it did, did something like that, it'd probably be a lot better. But the way it is now, it's just not really that viable in terms of how to like use it effectively and efficiently. Yeah, but if I if they did any one of those changes that I mentioned, it would be a lot better. But in terms of damage, it's going to be outclassed by the tree spear. This one's better for your strength. Faith builds, this one's better for your dexterity faith, um, dexterity faith builds, and dexterity faith is just going to be better than strength faith because you get more casting speed with this. Unfortunately, strength doesn't have those cool bonuses that dexterity has, and this one has higher scale um, requirements as well. But, albeit, it's still pretty cool. But yeah, this is not going to be as great as some of the other ones on here. Number five, we have the Serpent Hunter. This one's pretty much only useful for like a soul level one run. It's, it's literally designed to kill a boss, like it wasn't really meant to be like an everyday weapon. So yeah, any if you're any endgame build, this is, you're not going to want to use this, it's only... It has like that A scaling and strength, so it's like okay, but um... Yeah, the weapon art's average at best, it just takes way too long, requires way too much FP. It was designed for a boss fight, so it makes sense as to why it's like this. And last we have the Vikes War Spear, once again it's not a PvP list, so I'm just going to rank it purely based on PvE. If I was, if this was a PvP list, it'd probably be like number one or number two. Because it does, like it does decent damage in PvP because of that um, madness build up as well. Which is like the main selling point of the weapon is the fact that it does that madness build up. But yeah, it's, madness is not useful in PvE at all, so it's just not going to be that high. And not much to talk about, about the Vikes because 
of that reason. But yeah, that pretty much concludes my rankings and concludes the video. We have literally one more weapon to review, or one more category to review, which is the flails. Unless you guys want me to review fucking torches, then I will guess I'll do that one as well. Although, like, I don't know why the fuck you would, other than the fact if you hate me, but... Yeah, that's everything I want to say in this one, guys. See you in the next. Peace.